Welcome to Blood Bath and Beyond. Today we review Death House. Hell isn't a word, it's a sentence. Written by Gunnar Hansen and B. Harrison Smith. Directed by B. Harrison Smith. Starring Courtney Palm, Cody Longo, D. Wallace, and Kane Hodder. I will fuck you in hell. Death House is about two agents who are given an exclusive tour of a private security prison called the Death House. Using virtual reality, prisoners are taught to repress their evil until they are normal functioning members of society. And when the power goes out, all hell breaks loose. What do we like about this movie, guys? I actually like that all of our favorite horror icons are in one film together. Cause it is a cool idea to think like, oh, we got a movie with Michael Berryman, Bill Mosley, Kane Hodder, D. Wallace. Everyone's in it. Whether they're in it for a long period or not, it is cool having all of your favorite actors in one film. And even some people that are just associated with the horror community, it's kind of like a Where's Waldo situation where you're like, hey, there's Sarah French, there's Spooky Dan, there's that guy who did the panel at Texas Frightman. There's just like all these people in the background that you're like, hey, I know almost every single person and every single actor in this film. And that is kind of cool. Kane Hodder had a pretty strong performance in this. He actually plays one of the central roles. And he was one of the best actors, I would say. I think the concept is pretty cool. Have all these horror icons in a prison, let them do what they do best, and that's be part of a horror movie. And the idea that there's this like security or prison to keep all these people in one place, kind of like the raid or something, where it's just like one central location that you can focus on and go through all the guys. What didn't we like about this movie, guys? Firstly, I'd like to know that this is an incredible waste of time for a lot of people involved. Yes, the concept is great, and the idea of having everybody in a movie is amazing. However, the fact that most people don't even have lines. If they do, they might be in the movie for a total of four seconds and none of them really shine other than Kane Hodder and Dee Wallace and Barbara Crampton. Those are like the three major players as far as the horror icons are concerned. But everybody else is just kind of a throwaway character that doesn't do what they do best. I think the biggest issue with this film is when Gunnar Hansen had the original script, he had an idea and the script just got passed through many different writers over the years, which resulted in what you may or may not have seen today. That's Death House. This movie is just a disaster when it came to the writing, to be honest, because you don't really know what the hell is going on. Like, I mean, it's not a hard movie to dissect, but <laughs> the plot doesn't really work. The plot doesn't exist. You have the movie bookended with Tony Todd, and it doesn't even make sense or need to be there. It's cool to have him in the movie, but like the plot doesn't even begin to explain itself. You have a mangled mess with nine levels of shit. There are nine levels. Especially the ending, the last like little bit, you meet the five evils that this whole movie is building up to. You know anytime you'd watch like How I Met Your Mother, there's always like, okay, so you've watched all this and now, Here's what you need to take away from it. It's time to learn the day's lesson. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. But it was trying to be very preachy about the good and evil and technology taking over and it just sounded fucking lame. But like all of the dialogue was like that. It sounded like you have somebody who's an idiot trying to explain to me concepts I know better than them. I don't even want to say it's like we're dumbing it down. It's like they're trying to smarten up. We instill morality. Morality. <laughs> Principles concerning the distinction between good or bad and right and wrong. And they would do that for with a lot of things. Like if it was talking about what virtual reality is, what is AI, like there's a lot of shit that Everybody's going to know what they're talking about and they have to take five minutes to explain a concept because they do that The entire movie is just bloated dialogue scenes that run on for too long You're gonna be super bored, especially the the three Satan's room. Jesus Christ There are people here who are not insane. It gives you nothing that furthers the story It's kind of like with each room they go into it leaves you with like five new questions as to what is going on and the whole movie is just broken into segments of confusion. For example, they're like trying to get away and they're like, I know a place we can go. 
F the elevator where we're completely safe. Let's go to this room that has a bunch of skinless aliens for absolutely no reason. It's so that they can have a cool thumbnail on their trailer. It doesn't make any sense. They don't explain it. They don't go back to that concept that, you know, close that door and move on to the next thing. And it just continues like that. It's just obnoxious. They make it very clear that there's nine levels and that the bottom level is like hell or the worst the, the worst. The bad guys. <laughs> Even at some point you can be like, okay, here's the eighth level where it's like the cannibals or like and like have them work their way down or like deal with these people sectioned off or something some sort of cohesion that would make sense but instead you have just a mess like it's frustratingly bad and such an opportunity to get these people onto a set and then to do this with it is an insult to the horror community and we haven't even touched the vfx yet The setting of this film was a lot of green screen and pointless glitches. And the VFX that they actually do use is just, yeah, it's frustrating to watch because why is there a green screen in every single scene in this film? Like, I understand the concept, but it wasn't well utilized and I think they overdid it for sure. Like, when we look back and we look at a green screen, we don't see what's on the thing. So like having green screens around doesn't make sense until somebody puts that stuff in. And then you're broadcasting <laughs> that visual. Like I wouldn't turn around and be like, oh shit, look at that cool background. No, I'm seeing a green wall right here. <laughs> And that is not representative of my environment. <laughs> it's actually such a huge part of this movie. It's like, no, it's not real-time green screen. It doesn't replace the green wall and make it invisible. That's AR. I don't think any actor could have saved the movie. No amount of good performance can walk away with how bad that script was. Cody Longo and Courtney Palm. I actually do like these actors and they can act. However, when you're given lines that they're forced to read, it makes them look like they can't act. You want penetration? With every person who says a line in this film, you have seen them in another film and you know they are a good actor. And when you're watching this, it's not believable. Children being used and abused for the sake of progress that transcends evil. Look deep into their eyes and they're just like, oh, I don't want to say this line, <laughs> but I'm being paid to. If like, you're Satan, why don't you make those restraints disappear? This is a kind of harder to demonstrate. Well, no, it's actually pretty easy. The editing was awful in this movie. There were scenes where they would do something and you're like, wait, what? And well, this is the first example that we saw in the first scene. Tony Todd reaches into this girl's stomach. There's no blood on her shirt immediately. And then all of a sudden she's in the back of a car. Another bad editing choice was when they're stuck in the elevator shaft. We have Dee Wallace who is struggling. She needs to be helped along to escape these people. She's stuck on an elevator. Then all of a sudden she has now climbed up all of these cables and made it to the next floor, so we're supposed to believe, but it's done in one quick shot. It doesn't make sense. It's also really hard when you're trying to go back and forth between virtual reality and reality. There's one moment where the agents are having a virtual tour of the building, and then instantly they're in the shower, and then the next shot, they're wearing the exact same clothes. The, What's going on? I totally <laughs> had a virtual shower. Yeah, and I don't want anybody to think that this is like, oh, that's the point. They're like trying to make you confused whether it's virtual. Like, no, it's just shit. It was bad how they implemented it. It was a bad decision. It was not going to enhance this movie whatsoever. One hour later. Oh. It, we could go on forever. I think like the idea here is that we're not saying this movie is so bad you should see it. We're saying that you should not see it. It's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I read that this movie went through a lot of developmental health, and at some point, I think it should have been shelved, like Jay said earlier. There's nothing cool about it. There's nothing cohesive about it. It is just literally a bad movie. It's a waste of good talent. The fact that it had some budget to it is makes it even more upsetting because it's like, did you, you waste it on putting these people into a bad movie, didn't spend it on visual effects. Overall, just as a fan of movies, I can't emphasize enough just how bad this is. Please don't watch it. And don't blame us if you do. And <laughs> don't try to convince us otherwise that this is somehow a good movie. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this 0.5 shitty serial killer masks out of five. Much like probably everybody else, 
I was super pumped when I heard The Expendables of Horror. Maybe we're setting ourselves up for too much. My expectations just kind of went lower and lower. So we kind of went into this with zero expectations and somehow we still left disappointed. 50 minutes next to nothing happens. Like at the end of the day, the whole movie just doesn't have a cohesive plot or story despite how much they're trying to tell you all about the story. It seems like there was a world being built here by many different people and somebody just plucked out an idea here, plucked an idea here, threw it into a script and said, run with it. And I, do, I don't know how it actually finally happened and ended up like this. So I'm gonna give this 0.5 underutilized Debbie Rashawn playing leather lace cameos out of five. The biggest enemy in this film is the script. You have a strong cast, you have actors that everyone is familiar with, and you have a marketing scheme that you could market this movie and it should be profitable. Even if you don't like the idea that it's the expendables of horror, you can still utilize that and make it what horror fans want. This film is just boring and confusing and visually it is not that appealing. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film 0.5 fist bumps out of five. Girl power. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, there are links in the description where you can find it. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay updated with everything bloodbath and beyond.